In September 1935, when Picasso was 53, his 26-year-old mistress, Marie-Thérèse Voltaire, gave birth to a baby girl, Maya. Picasso was enchanted by his little daughter and painted whimsical, adoring portraits of her. But even this idyllic life with a lover and baby didn't stop Picasso's eye from roving. Before his daughter was a year old in 1936, Picasso met surrealist photographer Dora Maar. Picasso was attracted to Dora because she was beautiful. She had the sort of physique that he found attractive in a woman. She spoke Spanish. They could speak Spanish together. And she was extremely intelligent. And I think all of those aspects of her personality and temperament were very appealing to him. Picasso now had a wife and legitimate son and a mistress and daughter. Dora became his second mistress. Picasso was remarkably untroubled by the complicated arrangement. It seemed to feed not only his ego, but his art. My father might have had so many women in order to advance himself artistically, to transform himself in his art. What happened was he took everything he could from each one of them, that is, their feelings, so he could translate them into pictures. Picasso relished the differences between Dora and Marie Therese. Physically and mentally, they were polar opposites, but they had in common their love for him. To Picasso, they were like two sides of a coin. He would often see them both the same day, and he even painted their portraits in the exact same setting, seated in the same pose. He forced them both to accept sharing him, and both became miserable to the point of desperation. Picasso used their anguish in his art. Picasso nicknamed Dora the Weeper and immortalized her tears in his series called Weeping Woman. The paintings of Dora are extraordinary. I mean, she was a beautiful woman, and the way he treated her, she's intensely uh, hideous. But there is an extraordinary, uh, an exceptional uh, grasp of, of, of the human soul and its darkest in her. One day in 1937, the two tormented halves of Picasso's love life came crashing together. As Picasso watched, Marie Therese confronted Dora. She told her to leave Picasso alone, that she, Marie Therese, had his child and she was his rightful lover. Just imagine if all of a sudden you see the same man you sleep with every night going to bed with another woman in the afternoon. If my husband had done the same thing that my father did to Dora Mar and my mother, I would have killed him. Picasso later said, I had no interest in making a decision. I was satisfied with things as they were. The only thing Picasso could be faithful to was his art. But in 1937, Picasso became inspired by something outside his own life. Spain was being torn apart by a bloody civil war. General Francisco Franco was leading a rebellion against the democratic government, seeking to replace it with a fascist dictatorship allied with the Nazis of Germany. On April 26, 1937, Nazi aircraft bombed the city of Guernica in support of Franco. The pictures of human carnage shocked the world. Picasso was stricken with sadness. He had been commissioned to make a huge mural for the 1937 World's Fair, and now he made the canvas a declaration of his outrage. He painted mothers with dead babies, soldiers slain, townspeople massacred. He 
said, I am expressing my horror at the military caste which is now plunging Spain into an ocean of misery and death. His painting, simply titled Guernica, became the best-known artwork of the century and made Picasso a hero in the international fight against fascism. In January 1939, General Franco declared victory for fascism in Spain. Picasso vowed he would not return to Spain until the dictator was gone. Never. He never returned. He died first. He told me once that when the Guernica goes to Spain, he'll return. He would tell me, Arias, the day the Guernica is in the heart of Spain, we shall be happy. In June 1940, Nazi troops marched into Paris and occupied it without a fight. During the war, Picasso lived a rather quiet existence. He tried not to draw attention to himself, and he certainly was not in the resistance. Picasso, on the whole, was not heroic in character. He always was fearful. He always was quite concerned with his own personal comfort, because, in fact, the only thing that counted in his life really was his art. As Guernica traveled around the world, it became a symbol of the war's terrible violence and a powerful weapon against the fascists in the battle for public opinion. Guernica not only represented Picasso's political awakening, but a revelation in style. He returned to a childlike simplicity and found a completely new way to heighten the emotional drama of his work. He said once, you know, if I put an eye in the eye socket. I mean, people take the eye for granted. If I take it out of the eye socket and stick it somewhere else, then people pay more attention to it. I mean, it comes as a shock, and they see the eye anew. He told a young artist who came to visit him in 1943 when he was 61, one must rip and tear reality. The visitor's name was Françoise Gillot, and she was 21 years old. Picasso invited her back, and she began to stop by often. One day, he asked her to take her clothes off so he could see if her body corresponded with his mental image. I lay there in his arms as he explained this point of view, and I felt that it was the beginning of something very marvelous in the true sense of the word. Even though we were very different in age, we had a marvelous understanding, a rapport, I had a way with each other, which is astonishing because you seldom have it with anyone at all, whether your age or not your age. So it was marvelous in that sense. Picasso and Francoise became lovers. Again, one woman was not enough for him. It would be 1945, another two years, before he ended his relationship with Dora. After Picasso made it clear to her that their relationship was finished, she did have a nervous breakdown and uh, was very, very distraught and was for a time in a, in a sanitarium. Dora never really recovered. Later she said, he used me until there was nothing left of me, nothing but the hundreds of portraits of me he painted. It was true. Picasso no longer needed Dora. He had Francoise. And she, too, would become fuel for his art. On the 25th of August, 1944, the Allies liberated Paris from four brutal years of German occupation. Although all the nations allied against the Nazis were heroes in France, in the eyes of many, including Picasso, the Soviets had been the main force behind the defeat of fascism. On October 4, 1944, Picasso, now 62, joined the Communist Party. Now Picasso was not only the most famous painter in the world, he was one of the world's most famous and wealthiest communists. And while Picasso surrounded himself with an entourage, his old rival, Henri Matisse, worked in virtual isolation in the south of France. Matisse was ill, 
and only out of bed for an hour or two a day. In 1946, Picasso took his new lover, Francois Gillot, to pay Matisse a visit. Matisse, looking at Francoise, was inspired to paint her portrait. He said he would make her hair dark green and her body pale blue. Picasso's jealousy was inflamed by his old rival again. He appropriated Matisse's idea and painted Francoise as the woman flower, with the body pale blue and the hair dark green. Again, with a new woman in his life, Picasso's art changed completely. Now his work took on a joy and lightness it had never had before. Francoise had an irrepressible free spirit, and in that way was very unlike his previous lovers. She was very different from Dora. I don't think that she was really afraid of Picasso. 